In the wake of the United States experiencing its worst one-day coronavirus death toll, President Trump has been scrambling to find somebody to blame for why his administration took so long to act. He's blamed China, Obama, Carol Baskin, Hillary's emails for some reason. And yesterday, Trump turned his sights on the World Health Organization. Yeah, Trump announced that he would be withholding funding from the WHO because he says they were too slow to acknowledge human-to-human transmission of the coronavirus. He says they were also taking too long to declare an international public health emergency. And he criticized them for praising China's transparency. Now, look, those may be valid criticisms, but they still don't explain why Trump ignored his own advisors who were telling him to prepare for a major outbreak. They also don't explain why Trump also praised China for their transparency. And even if you don't think the WHO is perfect, the middle of a pandemic, the middle of a pandemic is not a good time to cut funding from a group that is an integral part of fighting coronavirus. Yes, the organization is not perfect, but this is not the time to cut them off. It's the same reason you don't give your Uber driver one star during the ride. You do that shit after you're safe at home, not while you're doing 90 on the freeway. One star, huh? One star? I'll show you one star, mother... And even if the World Health Organization acted perfectly, I don't know what Trump would have done differently. Because his White House is filled with a bunch of idiots. And I know, I know that's harsh, but I only say that because they are. There could be other strains later on. This can come back in the fall in a limited way. Uh, This is COVID-19, not COVID-1, folks. And so you would think the people charged with the World Health Organization uh, facts and figures would be on top of that. Seriously? This is COVID-19, not COVID-1. You know, you would think one of the president's top advisors would know that it's called COVID-19 because it started in 2019, not because it's the 19th COVID. What, does Kellyanne Conway also think that they called Blink-182 because the first 181 blinks were taken? You know, sometimes I think Trump tells Kellyanne Conway to say dumb things on purpose just so that he looks smart in comparison. Kellyanne. I just told a reporter that Shrek is the president of Scotland. Please go out there and say something dumber. I need you. All right, that's it for the headlines. Let's jump into the big story. Thanks to the coronavirus, people are stuck at home. Businesses have been shut down and millions of parents have been forced to Google how to kill your kids and get away with it. And because so many people are now unemployed, it is up to the US government to step in and give people some assistance while they ride out the shutdowns that have been imposed nationwide. So today, millions of Americans began receiving a one-time payment of $1,200 from the government. Now remember, that's only for people with direct deposits. Everyone else will have to wait longer for a paper check to come in the mail. Now, Trump wants every single one of these checks to have his signature on them, which they don't need, but he wants that. And so because of that, the checks could be delayed for an extra few days. Yeah. And that's gonna be another obstacle for those checks. Because remember, now that the check has Trump's name on it, the banks will probably decline it out of habit. Now, a one-time cash payment is definitely helpful. But what many people in America need right now is unemployment benefits. And right now, across America, the unemployment system has become kind of a disaster. Tonight, an unprecedented turn in the unemployment disaster. Another 6.6 million Americans applying for jobless benefits last week alone. Skyrocketing in just a month from a 50-year low to nearly 17 million seeking benefits in just the last three weeks. But that number is most certainly underreported. Many have been unable to file. The problem, states don't have the staff to handle the unprecedented demand. I've tried at 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m., and there's just no getting through. I've calculated over 2,000 attempts to call. Yeah, that's right. People have been spending all day, all day, just trying to get through to someone on the phone at the unemployment office. It's like an evil twist where filing for unemployment has now become these people's full-time job. I mean, that one woman said that she tried 2,000 times. She called 2,000 times. That is insane. That's as many calls as a mom makes when something goes wrong in the city where you live. Hi, love, I heard there was a car accident in New York. Are you okay? Yeah, I know you don't live there anymore, but I'm just checking. 
Okay, okay, love you, bye-bye. Now, obviously, 17 million people becoming instantly unemployed is gonna put strain on an unemployment system. But what hasn't helped is that America's unemployment system is built on technology that is one degree above Amish. Websites are crashing nationwide. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly admitted the technology for the unemployment system is four decades old and is not working as it should. Most states are still running on software that is basically from 60 years ago. Kentucky's website is run using the COBOL language developed back in 1959. I was born in the late 1970s, and so was our mainframe system. The same computers that processed my unemployment in 1981 are the ones they're still using today. Uh, look at those phones. Those phones are from the 70s. Sweet Lord, that is some old ass technology. Do you even call it technology when it's that old? Software written in the 50s, computers from the 80s. And did you see those phones? Yes, younger viewers of this show, those are phones. Look at those things. They're so old, the only thing they look like they call is the past. Hello, black people? Yeah, whatever you do, don't get on those boats. Free buffet? No, no, still, don't get on those boats. Now, I know a lot of people out there are gonna want to use this as an example that government is all a big bloated bureaucracy that can't get anything done. But here's the thing. If America looks just over the border, you'll see what happens when the people in government actually work to make government succeed. For those who have stopped working and lost their income due to the outbreak, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit will pay a taxable $2,000 per month, up to four months. Three and a half million people apply since being introduced just a week ago. The government says to date about 90% of claims have been processed. It just started on Monday and already two days later, many are receiving the $2,000 payments into their bank accounts. But some are telling us that they've received more money than they expected. Okay, you know what, Canada? I feel like now you're just rubbing it in. You're not only getting people their money quickly and efficiently, you're also giving them more money than they expected. I feel like Canada is always trying to one-up America. America has healthcare, Canada has universal healthcare. America has expensive college, Canada has affordable college. America's president adds a little color to his face, Canada's leader went all the way. They're always winning. And before you say this is all Corona's fault and there's nothing the American government could have done, consider this. Many other developed countries facing the same shutdowns have cut right to the chase and prevented mass unemployment from happening to begin with. How did they do it? Well, the governments of the UK, Denmark, and France paid companies to keep workers on a payroll and then subsidized 80 to 90% of their salaries. Yeah, that's what they did. Meanwhile, America is like, a lot of you assholes complaining about being broke, but you still walking around with two kidneys. Ain't nobody stopping you from selling one of those. So, with the unemployment system buckling and coronavirus causing almost 20 million people to lose their jobs, anyone, could be forgiven for losing all hope. But I will say this, while America might not have the most efficient government, one thing this country has in droves is a willingness to help one another in a time of need. Some bar owners are going to extreme lengths to make sure their employees are getting paid right now. This bar in Georgia has been stapling dollar bills to the walls for years. And the bar's owner decided to take down each dollar bill one by one to pay her employees. An act of kindness in a town in Iowa raises spirits at a time it is needed most. The anonymous person gave every household in that town about $150 worth of gift cards. Mario Salerno owns roughly 80 apartments in his hometown of Williamsburg, so he decided decided this month to waive rent for everyone, 200 tenants, and he is not collecting. I says, don't worry about paying me. Worry about your neighbor. Worry about your family. Yeah, that's how you know coronavirus has changed everything. Even New York landlords now have a heart of gold. Think about it. When have you ever heard anyone say, my landlord is amazing? That's like hearing someone say, that fight on Twitter really made me change my mind. And it's not just that amazing man who's doing his part. My landlord has also been doing everything he can to keep coronavirus from spreading. Like, he won't even come to my apartment to fix my sink for the past three years. Social distancing. I see you, Greg. So remember, folks, right now, the government is trying to help people, but they're bursting at the seams trying to keep up with the fallouts of this pandemic, which means wherever we can, we have to try 
and help each other out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna use one of those old time-traveling phones to give my five-year-old self some advice. Hey, little Trevor, you know all the toilet paper? Yeah, you need to start hoarding it right now. That's our show for tonight. Before we go, though, if you are able to help people who are going hungry because of this pandemic, please consider a donation to Feeding America. They're trying to supply people who need food. And right now, they're supplying food to millions of people in America every single day. And they could use your help. Even a dollar can help somebody get a meal. Anyway, stay safe out there. Wear a face mask. And remember, wash your hands before you pick your nose. I'll see you again tomorrow. (laughs) 